You've seen what the Starship looks like on the outside, but have you seen what it looks like on the inside? If you haven't, well, you are in luck because we're going to do a full dive of what the Starship looks like on the inside, just like the once famous MTV show, Welcome to My Crib. But first, we would appreciate it if you support us and the channel by hitting the subscribe button to subscribe to our channel. It makes us feel good about our efforts in keeping you informed. Thank you. So without wasting time, here is what the Starship looks like, starting with the flight deck. This is the most important part of the entire spaceship. If something goes wrong here, it affects the whole ship. When starships take off or land, the pilots and flight crew are on the flight deck. In here, the crew can handle and keep an eye on the whole starship by using the systems or control screens. There are 10 crew flight seats and 5 monitor systems or control screens on the flight deck. For comparison, the Dragon capsule can only fly 7 astronauts, so that makes Starship a bit bigger. Fun fact, the flight deck actually borrows designs from the current Crew Dragon capsule but modifies it to make it bigger to accommodate larger viewing windows with an interior shield to protect against solar radiation or space debris. Next, we have the Mess Hall. Mess Hall. The Mess Hall is where people come to eat, talk, have meetings, hang out, and basically just enjoy the view. The Mess Hall is the social hub of the Starship and was created to serve more than one purpose so that the crew could gather in one place. It can be reached through the central core, which has two hatches in this design. This makes it possible to divide sections within a level if needed and gives the crew a clear line of sight, giving the impression of more room or space if needed. Food supplies are kept in two different storage units, a long-term storage unit and a short-term storage unit. So, the idea is that food that will be consumed in a week or a shorter time frame could be taken from the long-term side and transferred to the short-term side, and you only go back to the long-term storage if you are running low on supplies on the short-term side. Then, the food can be cooked at one of the four food prep points so that several team members can cook meals at the same time. Basically, there are four kitchens in the Starship. Talk about living large. As with the flight deck, the viewing window has a shield to protect against solar radiation or space junk. To be frank, at this stage they had us in four kitchens. We are already impressed, but that isn't all the Starship has to offer. Next on our tour are the Crew Pods. Crew Pods. This level is where the personal Crew Pods are, which are used for sleeping, having personal room, and working. Basically, this is where your room will be. There are 20 pods on two levels, each with shutters for solitude and noise reduction, in case of one night stands. Just joking. Or are we? The current version has room for 30 crew members, and each pod entrance has a monitoring or display tool for assigning rotations and communicating tasks. The center core is big enough to fit 15 crew members. It was made to be a short-term shelter in case of a solar radiation event. The core bulkhead storage offers extra mission storage, emergency supplies, and backup life support equipment. Up next on our tour is the reason for being in space in the first place. Science and storage section long-term projects must have enough space for storage. The idea is that the Starship should be able to carry everything the crew needs for the whole trip without being able to restock. The International Standard Payload Rack System, or ISPR for short, is used for science and storage. The inside perimeter has eight ISPRs, nine fixed storage racks that can be used for different things, and seven to 12 individual storage units that move on a moving track so that the units behind them can be reached. Some fixed units also have a medical bay. A treatment bed and life support equipment can be stored vertically in one or two units and pulled down when needed. Then you also have foldable walls that would divide the area while treatment was going on. Pretty impressive if you ask us. Lastly, we have the EVA and storage. The extravehicular activity EVA level is made up of two main parts, a storage bay and an EVA hatch with a lift system that lets people get to the surface. The big cargo airlock on the Starship's lowest level can be used to get to the surface or go on spacewalks. With a surface cargo lift, crew can move tools and supplies from one place to another. On each side of the EVA, there are six spacesuits in the style of Exploration Extra Mobility Units, XEMU. These can be reached through their own airlocks. Extra suits would be kept in storage as spares or for other members of the team. Next to the suit access hatches are two sample return slash decontamination slash storage units that can be reached from both sides of the airlock. 
This lets the crew safely drop off science projects or samples. The airlock doors are all the same size, so big things can go to and from the surface through them. Frankly speaking, we are already impressed with the interior designs of starships. All that it is missing is a swimming pool and a bar, and you have yourself a top-notch vacation spot. That's all we have for you today. If you enjoyed this video, then hit the subscribe button to subscribe to our channel and the like button, so we know you loved it. Also, hit the little bell, so you get notified when we post new videos like this just for you. Thank you for watching. Till next time.